In this video, we'll be talking about the relationship between energy, internal energy, enthalpy, and heat. And this is a fairly advanced topic, and it's unlikely that this will be tested directly. But a lot of times students come to me with questions about, is enthalpy equal to energy? Or does heat equal energy? Is enthalpy equal to heat? And it's a very complicated thing to answer, and oftentimes it isn't explained very well. And so what I've done is I've set up a way that we can show how they're all related to each other and when you can use heat as a stand-in for enthalpy and when you can use enthalpy as a stand-in for energy. And so what we have here is in any closed system with no electromagnetic waves transferring between the systems, the change in energy is equal to the change in internal energy. And as we know, the change in internal energy is essentially the change in heat and work. And the change in enthalpy, the definition of enthalpy is an unusual one, but enthalpy, the change of it is actually equal to the change in internal energy plus PV work. This is somewhat unusual and this isn't a definition you'll be likely tested on, but this is the definition that you can use for enthalpy when you have a mathematical enthalpy definition that you're required. And at constant pressure, remember that work is PV work in a gas system. And so if it's the change in pressure times the change in volume, but pressure is constant, then all that you do is, rather than this blue work, we've essentially expanded that into P times delta V. So the change in internal energy will be equal to heat plus the change in volume times that constant pressure. The definition of enthalpy here still looks a bit different. It's Q plus P delta V work plus that original P delta V that we no longer have a change for because remember, we're dealing with constant pressure here. Then if you have constant pressure and volume, then the nice thing is that you don't have to worry about P delta V anymore because if there is no delta V, then pressure times the change in volume is going to be equal to zero and we can just forget about it. And so that means we can drop this term and at constant pressure and volume, we can say that change in energy, which is equal to change in internal energy, is equal to heat. And here for this definition of enthalpy, now we're dropping both PV terms because again, there is no change in volume, therefore these terms equal zero. And this is where you can assume that enthalpy and heat are the same thing and where you can assume that internal energy is equal to heat. And so if you have constant pressure and volume, then all of these things are the same. Change in energy is equal to the change in internal energy, and that's equal to heat. Heat is also equal to the change in enthalpy. And so all of these things are equivalent, and you can use heat in place of enthalpy, and you can use enthalpy in place of energy. You can use heat in place of energy with these systems. So in some thermodynamics problems, it's very, very acceptable to use heat as enthalpy, to use enthalpy as energy, and so on. But we have to realize when we are able to do that and when we're not. And so what we do is if we're working in a lab, we can assume that any change in pressure that's occurring is going to be very, very negligible. Any small change in pressure within a large lab will be so negligible we can ignore it. And the volume of the lab will not be changing at all. So we can sort of assume that because we have no change in volume, it's constant volume, and a relatively constant pressure, in a lab environment we can assume that heat approximates enthalpy, and that makes our calculations a lot easier. Another way we can do this is if no work is being performed or if there are no gases in the reaction. Because remember, this PV work is usually the only thing that makes this whole expression different from just the Q expression. So if you have no PV work being performed or if you have no gases involved, then you can always assume that heat is equal to enthalpy. And so this is a fairly complex example, but a lot of times students do ask, is enthalpy energy? Is enthalpy heat? And the answer is sort of, but not all the time. And so you need these conditions. You need constant pressure and constant volume. You need no electromagnetic waves. And 
you need to have some way of ensuring that PV work isn't being performed, and that allows us to eliminate all of these PV terms to where we can now express heat as all of these other things, energy, internal energy, enthalpy, and so on. And so ultimately, if you're given any clue that you're at constant pressure and volume, or if you're given a clue that you're working in a lab, or even in a smaller environment where there is no gas, and therefore the gases that aren't part of the reaction cannot produce any PV changes, then it's safe to say that heat is enthalpy, and that enthalpy can be equal to energy there, and that heat is sufficient to express the complete change in energy that's going on within that system.